So I've received a lot of questions on Facebook and Instagram, um, just kind of about how this hunt went down. But to summarize it, basically what happened, I always take off the first week of September just because pressure is a little bit lower. Um, you're fighting the heat, you're fighting deer not wanting to move. Um, and I all season, or all for the whole first week, I just kept diving into swamps and uh, I wasn't running into deer. The deer just weren't pushed into the swamps yet. The people that were having success in my neck of the woods, they were in the, um, the crop fields, the oaks, um, and the deer just weren't in the swamps. So I kind of shifted gears. Um, went to some farmland areas that I knew and uh, the first night that I went into the farmland area I walked past an apple tree. The, tr the apple tree was loaded. Um, you could kind of see where the deer were coming up to it but it wasn't secluded. It was out in the middle of nowhere so I figured they were using that at night. Um, but I got down to this little woodlot and uh, when I got down to the little woodlot you could see um, where some deer were kind of just a faint little trail where some deer were crossing some sorghum and uh, they were coming, it looked like they were coming out of another woods, but the main spot I wanted to go to was on the other side of the field. So the way I set up, I was kind of set up where I could kill two birds with one stone. I could catch anything coming out of either field. Um, and then basically what happened was at the last at the last half hour, basically, some deer came out on the other side of a, the, the other field. They were going to eventually work my way up past the apple tree, and uh, some does came through first. Um, the does caught my wind. There was like a 120-inch buck out in the field. Um, he went blowing out of there, and I was I figured the heck with this, so I jumped out of the tree. I was going to pack all my stuff up, get out of there earlier, and uh, get out of there like a, I was going to get out of there like a half hour probably before dark, and uh, I wanted to get out of there so that any deer that were still in the woods over there wouldn't see me, um, hoping that stuff was back in the woods a little deeper and I could get out of there. And uh, when I slung my tree stand around the tree, um, it made a clank, and then right below me, that little bleeder trail, sure enough, there was this buck. I saw him go tearing out of there. He, I don't know if he saw me. He definitely didn't smell me with the direction the wind was going. So the, the big reason why this worked out so well, too, is because he didn't know what I was up in the tree. He couldn't smell me. Um, and that's a big thing I learned last year when I was hunting down by Dan, chasing that big booner around. Um, I had those deer. I had that booner and that two-and-a-half-year-old just staring at me up in the tree. And uh, they never spooked until they actually caught my wind. So I knew he wasn't going to be too spooked. It was just going to be something that startled him. Um, I saw him take off cross field back towards this little wood lot. And I'll show on a map in a little bit here. All right. So this is pretty much the entire setup from the whole situation. Um, what you're looking at, these lines here, these brown lines, these are all drainage ditch. And then there's kind of woods and brush in the drainage ditch. Um, this is like a corn sorghum. This is uh, like a corn um, and then you got the wood lot up here. The first night I came down this fence line here um, and there's like a small bleeder trail like I mentioned that came out of this corner. It looked like they were coming across here and out there and it was like a solid 200 yards across here so I wasn't sure if anything in here would make it before dark. Um, but like I said I set up in here, saw the other deer out in the field to the north um, and I got down early. The buck was out here. He went tearing back into this wood lot. The big key with that is that I didn't bump him right out of the bed. I bumped him out of the food source and I knew where the bedding was based on where he went back to from past experience. Now in the morning we had that, it was like a north, northwest wind, um, going to be west later in the day. So I came in, there's a road down here, I came in from the road, up through the corn, got set up right here, stayed on this very edge, that way my wind would blow out this way. Um, and basically what I heard in the dark, I could hear him come through, there's some water right here, I heard him sloshing in the water, and then I could hear him work through this way, and then right up to me, and that's kind of the J-hook that was made. Now I don't know if they came from this way, this way, whatever, but either way, that was the way it came into bedding. So the next morning, um, I set my alarm really early. When I do these morning hunts in the early season like this, these deer are always bedded before first light. I shouldn't say always. Most of the time are bedded before first light. Sometimes I can catch them coming in in gray light. Uh, colder weather helps. You get those cold fronts and they seem to come back a little later. Um, but you got to be right in the bedding where you can literally shoot the beds wherever they are. So the plan was to get over the bedding and then basically I expected them to bed down before it got light and then just wait them out because eventually whether it takes an hour, two, three hours, he's going to get up, kind of mill around and then I can get my shot. So that was the plan. Um, set the alarm for 3.30, got up, got out there. Um, I couldn't tell you what time exactly I was set up by. I was set up an hour before light. Um, normally I'd look and see what time I was set up, but that 
as I was finishing setting up, I could hear him kind of J-hook around me, come in, and I could see him below me. And there was a little bit of, it was some cloud cover and the moon, so I could kind of see, make out what was below me. And I looked in the binoculars, and I could see his rack, and I could see those same tall bra tines that went dancing away from me the night before. Um, so I knew it was the buck I wanted to shoot. So then, at that point, it was really just um, wait him out, uh, wait till it got light. Hopefully, he wouldn't smell me. And I remember I just kept washing him with binoculars, and he just kept licking his nose, licking his nose, and... That's something I've seen all too many times where they're just trying to grab all that scent and kind of moisten up their nose. And I didn't know if he was smelling me or not, catching whiffs of me. Um, in situations like this where I'm over their bedding, I get as high as I can. I was uh, I had three sticks with aiders and then a bunch of branches that I climbed up. So you could say I was like five or six beast sticks high. Um, but I was really, really high. And that helps in these situations to get that scent out over them. So basically I just sat in the dark, held dead still. I had an o over an hour to just sit in the dark, play everything through my head, figure out how I was going to do it, um, make sure I wasn't going to make any clanks, any noises, make sure I had my yardage set right, make sure it was a buck I wanted to kill. So I was completely set, ready to go, 100% prepared. Um, it got light, and I actually had, I had a little green tree in front of me, and when I was sitting down, um, the buck couldn't see me. When I stood up, I was just high enough that I could shoot over it and shoot into him. So... Once it got light, I stood up, um, turned down my camera to the left of me, reached over my head and clicked on the GoPro. Usually I like to use the Wi-Fi remote, but that wasn't working. So I kind of had to be careful there. I apologize, the lens is all fogged out so you can't see much, but uh, so here's what happened. Last night I got set up. There's an apple tree between two crop fields over here, 
and the apples on the ground are significant. I mean, it's like a giant bait pile below it, basically. And uh, I went past the apple tree where they'd be coming up out of the woods, and you could see this small bleeder trail coming from this little wood lot that I'm in right now. And uh, it was just a faint trail, so I figured I'd better cover it. Well, when I was sitting there last night, um, I had like a 120-inch buck come out on the other side of the field, and some does came below me. They took, they, they smelled me, took him off with them. Um, but anyways, I decided I better get out of there quickly before he came back out in the field and saw me. That way I could make a plan on him for the morning or for uh, tonight. Well, while I'm ripping down my stand, I'm ripping it down pretty early. And uh, right below me, that little bleeder trail that I initially saw, a good one goes tearing off real tall brow tines. And uh, that was all I saw. It was, it was probably better than the other one, and he went tearing off. He had those big, tall brow tines. And uh, so anyways, I know this woods really well and how they use it. And we actually had a north wind, so I, with the way the woods lays out, and maybe we'll show it on a map later, with the way the woods lays out, I was able to stay as far south on the woods as I could. And uh, I got up at 3.30 this morning. Didn't get light until, I don't know, not long ago. But uh, I got, probably took me an hour to get set up. I came down the corn over there where the deer don't walk, so it's kind of like a free sit if you sneak in, sneak out kind of thing. I got in, got set up, and I'm literally getting my stuff set up in the tree and I can hear one coughing below me. Well then, the moon, kind of the clouds would kind of go over the moon and I could look right at him and I could see that it was that tall brow tight buck. And uh, so I just kind of sat and waited for an hour and as it got lighter he kept licking and licking his nose and I'm like, oh man, he's going to get a sniff of me. And. Uh, Finally, I had the opportunity, and I flipped on the GoPro over my head, got this camera running, and uh, shot him right in his bed. And it's kind of a tough shot, so I hit him in the shoulder, and he's stumbling around. He might have went down anyways, but I stuck one more in him. I actually had the sparrow hooked up. I was able to grab another arrow. Got to give that a plug, right? But uh, looks like he's down over there. I'm just kind of giving him extra time because you hear those horror stories where they jump up and take off. There was a post on the on the beast late recently and people were asking hey what time do you get in in the mornings what time do you set up in the mornings on these deer and uh, a lot of people said you don't hunt them in the mornings but if you know the bedding areas really well you can keep that wind blown out behind you and when it gets light they're eventually going to move around in here so that's basically what happened all right so i just got out of the tree um we'll go sneak up to him here now Oh, there he is. There he is. These are those big brow tines I saw go dancing through the sorghum last night. So I guess there's a lot of different takeaways you could take away from all this. Uh, the big thing I would tell people, i got a lot of people telling me right now, I can't find where the deer are, I'm not getting on to them. Um, just completely switch up your game. If you're in the swamps, get out of the swamps and get to the farmland. Um, if you're in the farmland, you're not running into them, maybe uh, get in the hill country. Just completely change it. Do something different. Those deer are there. If they were there last year, they're there every year. They're, they're there somewhere. It's just a matter of figuring out where they're holding up. Um, you got to put the time in, um, put some scouting in, and just tear through until you find them.